You know what else I like to do in the uh, summertime is I read. I love to read, and I love to read about business. I love to read about economics. I love to read about things that maybe I can educate myself on. I can tell you that there was a, a book that came to my attention, and I've told you about it a little bit today. It's called The Future Economy and Inclusive Competitiveness. And the term inclusive competitiveness just got me thinking, you know, what's this about? And the author compelled me to, former collegiate athlete, West Virginia, had some time in the NFL, and then turned that college degree into a master's degree and a law degree. He's Jonathan Holifield, and he joins us here on the John Kincaid Show on CBS Sports Radio. And Jonathan, I'm so happy you were able to join me this morning. I, I was intrigued by the book. I read summary of the book and then was able to get a hand uh, a copy of the book, and I appreciate that. And I, was, I, I always am interested in people who have an activist mindset but are trying to be activists by education. And dialogue. And I think your book does a fantastic job of that. And uh, I want to congratulate you on it and its success. Well, thank you very much, John. It's a pleasure to join you this morning. I'm excited about our talk. And if you allow me 10 seconds to clear sure. the deck very quickly. Yes. One, I'm in the Cleveland area. So go Cavs. Oh, jeez. <laughs> <laughs> and, and a shout out to my fraternity, of which uh, your podcast partner, Shaquille O'Neal, is a member. Omega Sci Fi. I've gotten texts about that, and I need to clear the deck. Oh, so. well, I'm, I'm glad you're doing that. I'm going to ask you about the Cleveland Cavaliers. You're going to have to talk a little Cleveland and, and some Indians. And I want to talk about the Cleveland fan mindset with you by the end of this. But I want Very to ask good. you again about tell if you were to define for me. 20 seconds. Inclusive competitiveness. What does it mean? Inclusive competitiveness is really about preparing uh, 21st century economic athletes, people who have the agility, skills mastery, stamina, grit to achieve economic mobility, security, and perhaps even prosperity in a dramatically changed world. It helps uh, create a north star, if you will, John, for underserved or disconnected communities to build new systems as opposed to just singular economic and education and social and human service programs, but community-based systems that are designed to cultivate that kind of talent. And when you talk about disconnected Americans, you're talking about women, you're talking about yep. the African-American community. You're talking about rural America. You're talking about the Hispanic community. You're not just speaking to one like segment or one demographic. You think there are lots of disconnected Americans right now. And there are sports themes, by the way, all through your writing. And I'm sure you know that. Absolutely. It's part, it's bedrock of my experience, my sports experience, which has had a profound impact on my life. But to your point about disconnected, let's frame it this way, John. We were clearly the dominant, America was clear, sure. and still is, the dominant global power in the aftermath of World War II. Well, the world has changed. Uh, China was not yet a market player. India was not yet a market player. At the whole continent of Africa was shaking off the shackles of colonialism. Eastern Europe was under the Iron Curtain. Western Europe was in shambles. Well, over the past 70 or so years, that has all changed, and there are billions of new competitors. We were dominant with one hand tied behind our back. I don't think it is possible. If there's a, 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 a certainty in the 21st century without bringing that second hand, which includes and really comprised of these disconnected Americans, bringing that second hand to the fight, um, I think our long-term economic competitiveness and prosperity is severely undermined. It's Jonathan Holyfield. His book, The Future Economy and Inclusive Competitiveness, brings so many sports themes into us, and I love that. You, I, I, One of the things I was really interested in was you, you've even been a part of this, new information and design-focused high schools. That, yeah. uh, like, that, that maybe the education system and the way we are educating the quote-unquote disconnected Americans, the way we're educating them may be wrong and we're not bringing them the skill set that they need to be able to step up and be part of things or bringing things to them that they need to succeed. 
Absolutely. And I do think in some ways, and, and feel me on my point, because there is a bit of a political judgment here, but the notion of uh, a trickle down versus pull down. And, you know, America is a nation of doers. And in no other area of our society do we encourage Americans to wait for others to create opportunity for us. Right. So why do we apply that kind of thinking when it comes to economic competitiveness and performance? Our challenge is not to allow trickle, but allow pull down, equip these populations to reach up and pull down value. But we haven't quite yet developed the kind of systems or the kinds of narratives in these communities that will allow that. John, Jonathan, you're, you're a guy in, in Cleveland, in Ohio. And and a lot of the, uh, you know, populations and a lot of those major cities up in the what they call the Rust Belt ha- have sort of seen a decline. Uh, do you think these kind of things and this kind of thinking and rethinking can bring back those communities? I really do. And, you know, there are a couple of dynamics in our nation. One is uh, where you have just, you know, states or communities with just uh, an approach to development that's based on lowest cost of production. From my vantage point, uh, I don't think that's a sustainable model. At the end of the day, it's about the value we add to the production process. What are we creating? And that requires human talent. And to develop that talent, it requires investment in that talent. Uh, So while some Communities have progressed under a race to the bottom in terms of uh, uh, low taxes, low cost. All of that's important and a part of the mix, but it alone, without development of the human capacity and human potential, it's unsustainable. And we have deep reservoirs of talent that just hasn't been brought to the game, and I believe that new systems can help do that. Has being a Cleveland sports fan changed? because of the success of the Indians and the great success of the Cavs. Does it feel different being a Cleveland fan? Yeah, John, it really (laughs) does. And and, and I have to tell you, uh, I grew up in the Detroit area. Uh, My my heart teams are still the Lions, the Pistons, and the Tigers, and talking about long-suffering with the Lions, even more so than the Cleveland uh, Browns fans. But being in this market – and uh, watching uh, LeBron James. Now, I'm a Magic Johnson guy, right? I grew up in Michigan. He was our guy. He still is our guy. But I tell you, this LeBron guy, he is something. He is something. And you know what's weird? I think LeBron ties into your book because I think LeBron totally broke the mold of what you're supposed to do when you come into the NBA. He got surrounded by a different type of marketing team. He, he didn't do the traditional things that everybody else wanted him to do. And if LeBron James isn't a spectacular example of an American success story, there isn't one. I mean, he, man. He's, well he broke said. John Kincaid. He bro- well, he broke the, he broke the mold. He, what, and guess what? I raised my hand and said before, I was critical when he was coming out saying, what's this kid doing? bringing Mm -hmm. along all his friends and doing things different and going with an untraditional type agent situation. I said, he he thinks he knows it all. Guess what? It worked for him. And and I'm, and I'm impressed by it. I'll tell you, I'm impressed by the book, the future economy and inclusive competitiveness. So many sports themes through it. And Jonathan Holifield, I appreciate your time this morning. I hope you have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, The book can be picked up on Amazon, and uh, thank you for the opportunity to share. Absolutely. Check it out, and uh, take care of yourself, and uh, go Mountaineers, I guess, too.